Hello, welcome to Stuff and Things with Chris. I'm your host, Chris. Today, it's a special one of these. So Netflix has all kinds of stuff on it. If you look at my list on Netflix, it's got like, I don't even know, like 25 different things on it. And so the problem I always have is that I'm about to watch something on that list and then I hear about something else or I see something that looks interesting and I'm like, oh, I'll watch this instead. So I start watching something else so that I never get around to watching what's on my list. So one of the things I always get suckered into is true crime documentary kind of things. And there are two of those out on Netflix that just came out at the beginning of the year and within the last couple of months that are outstanding. So the first one is this one. So The Pharmacist is a crazy story about a guy named Dan Schneider who was a pharmacist in what they call, what uh, Bernard Parish just outside of New Orleans basically on the outskirts of New Orleans. It's right next to the uh, to the uh, Ninth Ward in New Orleans. So as we begin the, the docu-series, uh, Dan Schneider is trying to figure out what happened to his son who was seemed to be leading a pretty normal life and then all of a sudden one day they find him dead in the Ninth Ward and he was down there apparently buying drugs, which is a big surprise to his family. Schneider, at this, this is, uh, you know, this is in the 1990s, late 1990s. I think it's 1999, actually. So during this time period, there was uh, a lot of cries of corruption within the police department in New Orleans for a lot of not really investigating a whole lot of murders, especially in the Ninth Ward, especially involving drugs. They were kind of like, eh, you know, kid got what he deserved. He was buying drugs. I, you, he got ripped off. What are you going to do? But Dan Schneider doesn't really buy that. He wants to know who did it. He wants to find out who killed his son. And so the first episode of the four-part series is kind of about him attempting to solve the crime himself. He goes all in. Um, he's doing harassing the police department. He's interviewing witnesses. He's calling random people in the phone uh, in the phone book to see if they've heard anything. He's going to people's doors. And so he is very determined, almost obsessive about it. And what he dis he finally discovers who did it. There's a lot of twists and turns just in that first part of his investigation. Then after he has gotten the answer to who killed his son, he starts to notice some other things as he goes back to his job at the pharmacy. And that's where the rest of the docu-series, the last probably two and a half episodes, spin off into crazy land. And this becomes the epidemic and epicenter of the oxycodone just fiasco. And his parish, Bernard Parish, is ground zero. He starts, his, starts seeing huge amounts of prescriptions from people who are young, too young to be needing it, and they all seem to be coming from one doctor, also in Bernard Parish, who has a doctor's office in a warehouse district. And, and again, he goes all in. He's all obsessive about it. He's filming, he's videotaping, he's doing all kinds of stuff, staking her place out. He's going to the DEA, he's going to the FBI, he's going to the police, the sheriff's department. Everybody he can get to, nobody's really interested. There's, it, it, it just kind of the spirals out of control from there. You see the expanding conspiracy, really. I mean, it involves government officials. It involves pharmaceutical companies and all of them just doing whatever they can to keep the flow of Oxycontin going at high levels, regardless of what the outcomes are, which as he sees firsthand are just massive amounts of overdose deaths. And he targets this one doctor who is in his parish and finally gets this ball rolling with some investigations. And you see what happens with that investigation. And then he decides, man, there's something even bigger going on here. And you know, the doctor turns out to be just one of 
hundreds across the U.S. who are doing exactly the same thing. It's basically a pill factory. They're getting huge amounts of money raked in. They're taking cash payments, not even insurance. They're uh, prescribing massive doses of Oxycontin, which would kill horses. And people are just signing off on scripts and doing it all. It turns out all over the country, it becomes a huge scandal. Uh, pharma pharmaceuticals, who is the manufacturer of oxycodone, tries to get in. They're called in front of Congress, and there's all these, you know, all this just huge range in conspiracy. And it's very well put together. Uh, the documentary, you know, it's four episodes long, so it's not a huge time investment. It's about an hour each episode. And man, it is uh, it is very good at telling the story as it unfolds. It really is kind of edge of your seat. I mean, you will watch it and just be like, uh, this is just crazy. How did all this happen? And then you kind of really have to get some respect for Dan Schneider, who did pretty much all of this on his own. You also get a very good sense of what it means to take on a case like this and what it did to his relationship with his wife and his daughter and you know, how he almost just lost everything due to his unbelievable obsession with it, trying to figure out where the domino drops, who is ultimate, re ultimately responsible for the oxycodone, uh, oxycodone just uh, addiction across the country. And it's really very taut, kind of a thriller kind of a thing, really. It's not your standard documentary. You, you really feel the ups and downs of everybody involved in this the pharmacist look for it watch it very good now we're going to move on to this one <laughs> don't f with cats now i'm going to have to be honest this 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 one kind of went under the radar for me i, I don't mean the documentary the documentary I saw, I'm like, I don't even understand what this is about. And so I kind of read the little synopsis. So that sounds interesting. The events of the documentary, what, what it's about, I never even heard about. So I don't know what that means about me, but I'd never heard of any of this stuff. Now, this is uh, a different kind of documentary than The Pharmacist. The Pharmacist is more like a spy thriller kind of a thing, really. This is one of the more disturbing things you will see. If you are into, gee, I wonder what makes a serial killer a serial killer, this is right in your wheelhouse, okay? Because that's what this show's about. So in 2010, some sick individual posts on Facebook a video called One Boy and Two Kittens, and in it, he puts two kittens in a vacuum seal bag, sucks all the air out, and kills them. Then posts it on Facebook. Again, I, I don't remember this happening, but you know, I, I guess I wasn't really on Facebook much then. But as you can I, as you can suspect, there was a huge outcry. So much outcry that a Facebook group formed called Don't F With Cats. Their entire purpose in existence and the creation of their group was to find the person who did this. Now, the, the video was a home movie. It was shot in somebody's bedroom. And they go through this amazing kind of detective work where people from all over the group are picking out clues from, you know, trying to narrow down where the suspect is from, what part of the world is he in, who is he, and they go through all of this kind of stuff, and it gets just absolutely crazy. Uh, this, this turns out to be the story of Luca Magnata. I don't know who that is. He is a famous, he's semi-famous, infamous, I guess you could say, in Canada, because that's where all these events take place. So maybe that's why I'm not as familiar with him. But uh, he has, Luke Magnata has some major 
issues. Uh, he does a, you know, he is a classic narcissist, uh, also a sociopath, uh, also probably psychotic as well. And so he posts this video. The Facebook group kind of figures out who he, who he is and, and they go to the authorities and, and they're trying to get somebody to pay attention. They don't, nobody really does. And then his, I guess, progression escalates. And of course it escalates into an actual murder of a person. So you see this just real downtrodden thing that they are harassing this guy. The Facebook group is harassing Luca Magnata. They're trying to figure out who he is trying to, the, the, lots of people in this group are sending threats to the guy. Uh, he is infiltrating the group. He, he has this obsession with himself and he's invented this whole persona and made up all of these fake Instagram pictures of him and all these amazing scenes and places and, and the reality is 100% different. Uh, it's, it's just bizarre. It's hard to explain. You really have to watch it to get it all in there. The, the crime he commits is only two years after he posted the cat video and it's off the wall insane. Uh, it's just, you're, whoa, I mean, uh, it, it involves the murdering of an international student and then the dismembering and sending pieces of his body to various places throughout Canada. I mean, you're talking like uh, Braveheart, what they did to William Wallace back in the day. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it, just off the chain. And then there's an international manhunt because not only does he murder this, inter this international student, but Luca also posted a video of him doing it again yikes and i can't remember if it showed up on youtube or facebook i don't remember but one of those and so then there's an international manhunt because he goes on the run and i mean it's just man it is off the chain uh you're watching it and you're just you're kind of riveted to just see how this is all going to end uh, it only covers a four-year time span because by 2014, he's been convicted. So he's it, from 2010 when he first posts the video about the cats to 2014 when he gets imprisoned. You know, it's just a, a relatively small window. You, there's a whole lot of psychological stuff in this, not just about the perpetrator of the crime, but also the people in the Facebook group because they feel maybe they are responsible in some way because they were following him and harassing him and trying to get in all their knowledge about him they could and he was emailing them and they're responding back and it's kind of a cat and mouse game and did they push too hard too fast and that upped his ante quicker th than normal you, you have to decide that for yourself I, I, you know it, it's hard to stop crazy what are you going to do it's really just uh, off the charts. I mean, just it's hard to believe it ever even happened. Any of it happened. Uh, but it is similar to the pharmacist in the regard that a pri private citizens, in this case, a group of private citizens, as opposed to just Bob Schneider in the pharmacist, go outside the boundaries of law and do all their own investigating, produce all their own evidence, and then present it to the police and attempt to get some sort of rectification of the situation before it escalates into something worse. And in both cases, the eventual perpetrators are brought to justice, but not without lots of casualties in between the first, pro the beginning of the process and the end. Uh, I mean, don't F with cats. It's not for the faint of heart. They don't actually show any of these videos. They show snippets of them. They don't show any of the actual uh, death scenes in any of the videos. But it is a little disturbing. Um, the content's a little disturbing. His psychosis is very disturbing as to what all he thought about himself and how long he had planned this whole arc he was going to go on and 
uh, his obsession with movies and, and how that played into it. I mean, it's just, it's really kind of just uh, bizarre and it sounds like science fiction and sounds like it's all made up and it's all 100% true. I mean, it's just, woo. Uh, I recommend it. It is not for the faint of heart, like I said. It might keep you up for a few days later, or it might not, depending on whether or not things like the confession tapes of Ted Bundy keep you up at night or not. Um, you know, I, but I have to say, it's really well done. It's plotted pretty well. Uh, the people in it are interesting, kind of their attitudes towards the whole situation. I would recommend this. So, here's there's two good docu series out there: The Pharmacist and Don't F for with Cats. They're both on Netflix right now. Uh, Pharmacist is four episodes. So is Don't F with Cats. So they're not a huge time investment. They're both really well done. Probably start out with The Pharmacist first. It's a little less uh, just in your face than Don't F with Cats. But if you can handle the subject matter for Don't F with cats, then check it out. It's interesting. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell so that you'll know when I have new and exciting reviews out. And I will talk to you later.